coverage of the World Challenge Championships is being brought to you by GameStreamer, the official digital gaming provider of World Challenge. Welcome to the GameStreamer 2010 Year in Review for World Challenge. We're here in Salt Lake City, actually at the banquet, where we've been celebrating a year that has been like no other in the World Challenge Championship. We'll catch up with the guys and talk to the champions, but first, let's take a look at them picking up their hard-earned awards. Your GT Drivers Champion for 2010, Randy Folks. You've done it again, Randy. Won another championship in World Challenge, and this time in a car that was so remarkable, the fans really couldn't believe it. Lucky me is all I've got to say. I'm so fortunate to be a part of Jim Huey's K-Pax racing team, and they've brought... It's just a, a combination of extremely talented people with a lot of depth. What an honor, and what a great car. The Volvo S60 turned into a race car that can run with Vipers and Corvettes. It's, it's a wild machine. It truly is remarkable. And in the new, new, newest nomenclature, we call it the naughty Volvo, the S60. And, of course, that 300-horsepower streetcar, now represented by the K-Pax racing team. I know this has been a dream of yours for a long time. It, it has. It's been three years in the works here. The first year is uh, put the car together. Second year is a development year where the car, you know, broke every other race and had to change the transmission between practices. And uh, this year, uh, we we worked out a lot of bugs. And that car, it, it's a nice culmination of all the work that everyone's put in the car, all the crew, the drivers, and uh, yeah, and it's been great. One of the things that all World Challenge fans are thinking about is what's going to come out of K Pax next year. Your champion. Cunningham. Nobody's won more in World Challenge than real-time racing, and the man at the pointy end of that is Peter Cunningham. Congratulations on another championship. Hey, thanks, Tom. It was uh, great to be a part of this new GTS category in World Challenge this year, and uh, as it turns out, the Acura TSX was the right car, and real-time was the right team. You know, when you have a team, there's got to be somebody who runs all of the details, and as long as Peter Cunningham has been around, Nathan Bonneau has been around almost that long. Nathan, congratulations on another trifecta, Manufacturers, Drivers Championship, and Team Championship. Yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, we got a great group of guys who have been with the team for a really long time, and, and it was a tough year beginning, you know, first year GTS uh, class, but uh, they worked hard, had no DNFs, and, and real proud of the guys. Another dynasty could be described as Dale Earnhardt, but the difference is in World Challenge, everybody loves to watch real-time win. The youngest ever champion in World Challenge history, Robert Stout. And Robert Stout, that was a pretty good performance in 2010. Yeah, you know, we uh, we came out of rounds one and two at St. Pete, and we really knew we had something to work with for this championship. We came out, you know, the crew worked so hard week after week, making sure these cars were as perfect as possible. I came out, you know, I really tried to make sure I knew these tracks before I got there, being a rookie, not knowing a lot of the tracks we've been to. And uh, we just went out and tried to stay as consistent as possible and keep pounding around in the top three, top five. And uh, because of it, we've managed to come out with a lot of awards this year. Well, as any professional driver will tell you, driving is one thing, but you can't do it without an excellent team. And Don Gardner, you did an unbelievable job putting a great team together, sharing a car with Tom Lepper, and still finding a way to manage this young driver to probably one of the most remarkable championships we've ever seen in four different ways. Yeah, you know, um, Robert was a, a great piece of the puzzle, but it, just like any puzzle, it takes a lot of pieces to make it all happen. And, you know, Robert talked talks about knowing that we had something to work with in St. Pete, but what uh, what he doesn't know is I knew we had something to work with before we started, and we were waiting to see how a couple of the other pieces shaped up, and Robert m m turned into a, a great essential piece of the puzzle, and uh, I'm happy to bring back the win to my guys, and for them to go up there, for Robert to take what's his, and, and for Scion to enjoy their first manufacturer's championship in the series. Any way you look at it, it was a remarkable championship, and none of it could have happened without these two gentlemen. Now it's time to celebrate our manufacturer's championship, representing Volvo Cars of North America. Gino Effler accepts for GT. Then it was Lee Neffenegger, the senior engineer of business development for HPD, on the performance development. And then Greg Kitson, the corporate manager of dealer operations, representing Toyota Motor Sales. We thought we'd leave you this year with the Game Streamer World Challenge 2010 Year in Review. 
And what a year it was to review. It started on the streets of St. Petersburg. Gino Crescentini fast, but problems was not able to take his spot on the grid. It was the Volvos up front. As usual, the Volvos get things started with that all-wheel drive and that turbo power. And it was Peter Cunningham in the brand new category leading in the accurate TSX in GTS. And a brand new face going at it in the touring car category. Young Robert Stout making his first appearance, but it was Todd Burris winning the category in his debut. Then it was the second round, also at St. Pete. Guess who was back? Dino Crescentini, and he made the most of it. Dino Crescentini gets through turn one fastest, and then this big moment involving the brand new Nissans and the number 57 car, Pat Lindsay. Meanwhile, Stout and Gardner, the two teammates going at it. This one for the win as well. The checker flag flies. P.D. Cunningham brings it home for a second straight win in the new GTS category, but it was Burris who would sweep the weekend in touring cars. Then we move to the legendary Streets of the Beach. First time we've done this ever with three categories in World Challenge. It gets busy on Shoreline Drive right off the bat and trouble for Peter Cunningham early. Meanwhile, Dino Crescentini trying to work his way up through the pack. He and Boris Sand have a coming together. Both of them manage to continue. Not so, Ron Fellows. A comprehensive engine blow up. Whitmer steals the win. Tyler McQuarrie shows up in a Lotus and takes the honors in the GTS category. And then it's Robert Stout, the number 18 Scion TC, who takes the win in touring car. Up to Canada, Beausport International Raceway, the legendary daunting venue. Big field on hand. At the start, it is Pulps once again, who was putting in a tremendous season, especially in terms of qualifying, and Stout struggling. Chip Herr shows up for Mosport and puts on a driving clinic in the car that Todd Burris once drove. Meanwhile, John Heinrichsy showed up as well, and he goes to the front in the GTS class, and it is the Scions at war with Chip Herr. Mosport, the second round, and it is a battle royale as guess who shows up? The mayor's in town. Ron Fellows flies all night to come back from the West Coast and puts on a clinic going side-by-side side down two with Randy Post. And in the touring car class, it is Stout and hit Chip Herr at war with Rob Holland. And meanwhile, GTS Cunningham and Macquarie, Acura and Lotus. What a mix. John Heinrichsy wins in the T1 Corvette that they brought over. What a show by Heinrichsy. Then to Watkins Glen International. And a great start by the Volvo and awful start by Rob Ron Fellows, however, it was going to get interesting in a hurry. Fellows fixes that as Pope's uncharacteristically makes a small mistake. Speaking of mistakes, Greg. James Sofronis, a little bigger one. Lindsay goes through. Then a big mistake. The pole sitter in touring cars, Eric Meyer, just grazes the wall. But up front, once again, it is Cunningham and Stout in touring cars. We go to the streets of Toronto once again. And it's the Volvos out front in front of a huge crowd. As they go down into turn number one, it gets very crowded again. Pope's got the launch, but Sofronis knifes underneath Pilgrim, picks up the second spot. Pilgrim slots into third. In GTS, Peter Cunningham, another win. And in touring cars, Mayhem. It's Brett Sandberg connecting with the series points leader, the number 18 car of Robert Stout. But Nick Whitmer, the number 93 HBD car, takes the win on the weekend. We move to a doubleheader at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. And Mike Skeen invited to drive to show what he could do in the Krager Corvette and promptly goes to the lead over pole sitter James Sofronis. Took everybody by surprise, including Sofronis. But meanwhile, Peter Cunningham, sort of a specialist here at Mid-Ohio, had his own way one more time. And Ryan Eversley showed up in a Mazda RX-8 and promptly got right into the midst of the touring car wars and brought home a win in that class. Skeen winning overall at NGT. Round number two at Mid-Ohio wouldn't let the fans down. Another barn burner this time with a number 14 Global Motorsports Group car at the point. Then a couple of Volvos in behind it. Crescentini off and stuffs it into the barriers. His day was done. Damage. And in GTS, Cunningham and Ernie Jakubowski go after it in that category. Ryan Eversley and Rob Holland get together, creating a huge incident. And Eric Meyer gets into it as well. 
But up front, Sofronis holds off the Volvos, brings it home for the win in the GT category. After that, another doubleheader on tap at Virginia International Raceway. It was Pope on pole, Whitmer in second. Behind them, mayhem was about to ensue as Gaskalos getting into the back of Sofronis. He was able to gather it up and continue. Intentions are high as Todd Burris makes his return to the championship and leads early over Robert Stout. And in the GTS category, Nick is saying a longtime competitor in World Challenge, many podiums, but never a win. That ended here at VIR. He got his first ever career win, and Randy Popes expanded his lead in the championship. But that was only half the action. Round number two for the second last race of the year. A different day altogether, much sunnier, and the Bobos get out early. Then in the touring car battle, Stout and Burris, the war was rejoined, and Stout was able to hang on. But watch here, Rob Morgan and Jason Daskalos get together. Big moment for Morgan. Meanwhile, it's Andy Pilgrim up front in the mule car, of all things, takes his first win of the championship. Petey Cunningham clinches a championship in GTS, as does young Robert Stout, becoming the youngest ever champion in World Challenge history. But it's still not over. Off to Miller Motorsports Park for the season finale. And once again, Randy Post gets off to a great start, but Kuna Whitmer would figure into this race as well. A huge battle in touring cars, three wide, and Whitmer going for the lead, using traffic as a pick, and gets into the point. Peter Cunningham sideways as he makes the pass for the lead on Ben Crosland. Might be the best move we've ever seen him make. Now, Kuno Whitmer wins it and then ruins the roof of a perfectly good Dodge Viper. And completing a dream season, young Robert Stout brings home his fifth win of the championship. It has been an amazing season of World Challenge. Thank you so much for joining us. If this is any indication, 2011 should be amazing. World-Challenge.com. Try to keep up.